Hello, welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. More than 60% of Queensland's pastoral country is today in the grip of severe drought, while livestock prices flounder, according to a new state report. Cattle from western Queensland and the southeast of the Gulf of Carpentaria are suffering. Lactating stock were generally in the poorest condition. Large numbers had been moved from western areas to the east for sale, slaughter or adjustment. Adjustment was very limited and is very difficult to obtain. Producers have called on the federal and state governments to make an exceptional circumstances declaration and provide farm financial assistance. It may come as cold comfort to Queenslanders, but a new report released this week by Deloitte Consultants says agribusiness is expected to deliver an additional $250 billion to Australia's economy during the coming 20 years. National Farmers President Duncan Fraser said the report indicated that producers, processors and supply chain partners were well placed to meet growing demand from a growing Asian middle class. There remained many challenges to be overcome as the blueprint for Australian agriculture and now the Deloitte positioning for Prosperity report showed. Across the country, Western Australia's peak local government body has warned that the state is facing a roads and road safety crisis as farmers prepare for a bumper grain harvest. The Local Government Association has weighed into the debate over the failing grain freight rail lines offering a bleak assessment of how wheat belt roads would cope with thousands of unplanned grain trucks. Western Australian President Troy Pickard said most local roads were not designed for carting bulk grain and local government councils could not afford new repairs and maintenance. Rabobank forecasts a mixed grill outlook for the Australian beef sector in coming months, despite the fact international demand is likely to remain strong. The bank's recently released beef quarterly report says poor seasonal conditions across Queensland and parts of New South Wales have powered increased market supply during winter, applying downward pressure to prices. The Bureau of Meteorology's three-month forecast suggested the southeast of the country was expected to receive above median rainfall in the coming months. However, the outlook for Northern Australia is not optimistic. Rabobank Senior Animal Proteins Analyst Sarah Siver says that a morsel of good news for beef producers was that supply was set to contract during the remainder of the year. Australia's horticulture sector is set to benefit from a new agreement between Horticulture Australia Limited and the Indian Council of Australian Research. A new memorandum of understanding will allow Indian government institutes to engage with Australian R&D agencies for the first time through HAL. India had one of the largest horticulture sectors in the world, with many of its growers facing similar challenges to Australians, according to HAL Chair Selwyn Snell. Until now, the two countries had worked independently to advance their industries. The New South Wales Irrigators Council says it is disheartened by the findings of the Australian Energy Market Commission's final report on competition in the state's electricity market, claiming the analysis ignored large users. The AEMC was asked to review the state of competition of the New South Wales electricity market, but focused only on households and small businesses. Large electricity users were ignored, according to Irrigators Economic Policy Analyst Stephanie Schulter. It was not only small-scale electricity users who had experienced increases in electricity costs. Large users, specifically irrigators, had also suffered, only more so. Finally this week, fish and other marine products are now available at local shops in Japan's Fukushima prefecture, as offshore test fishing reportedly demonstrated the local catch was safe from contamination. A local fisheries cooperative test was made on Wednesday last week, and retailing of local marine produce resumed early Thursday. Based on the cooperative's test on 100 fish, only five showed traces of radioactive materials, but each was less than a tenth of the government's limit, the cooperative said. Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. I'm Andy Walker. Look forward to your company again next week. Bye.